The SM Plugin Source Code Maker is an optional module of the Ceph Manager that allows users to create source codes and SQL scripts using the information of a Ceph file. To install an SM Plugin, right-click on the installer and select Run as Administrator. And then just follow the instructions of the installation. If the installation was successful, bring up the Ceph Manager. You should see under the Tools menu an option titled Source Code Maker. When we run the Source Code Maker, we see options to create code that will translate and generate an EDI file, create a TransSQL script, and create a sample EDI document. So let's run the option that will create the source code for translating an EDI file. Okay, here's the code that got generated. You can actually copy and paste the entire source code and it will run if you follow these five steps. But that's not really practical, nor do we recommend it because the generated source code has no business logic and auto-generated codes are never well written as your own algorithm. An effective way of using the source code maker is to just copy and paste the section of the code to your own program. So for example, if you want the section that will read and translate the CTP segment, which is located in loop section IT1 in area 2, you would search for the segment ID CTP and verify that the procedure name has area 2 and loop section IT1 in its name. Okay, so let's start the search for the CTP segment. Let's scroll to the procedure section and then search for CTP. And here it is. Let's scroll up to the procedure name to verify that this is indeed in area 2 and loop section IT1. And it is. So let's scroll back down and select it and its data elements. Copy it. And then paste it into our program. like so. And there, we just saved ourselves a lot of typing. The generate option is basically the same concept as the translate. The other helpful feature of the SM plugin source code maker is a transact SQL script generator. When we run it, it generates SQL scripts that will create a table for each loop so that all you would have to do is replace its field names with more meaningful names or delete unneeded fields. So for example, let me bring up the eFile manager to view an EDI file. If I wanted to translate these N1 loops into a database, I would create a table for the ship2 and build2 information. So back on the SQL script. I'll search for the letters N1. And here is the script that will create a table for the N1 loop. I'll select it. And copy it. And then bring up a SQL editor. And paste it. Then I'm going to modify the script to give the table user friendly names. Like renaming the table name to ship2. To. And delete fields that we don't need, like this identifier code field. 
So continuing on, I'll rename this field to name. And delete this qualifier because all ID will be DUNS. And change this field to say DUNS ID code. Then delete everything else in the N1 segment. I don't need to capture anything in the N2 segment, so I'll delete that as well. Rename the fields in N3 as address 1 and address 2. In the N4 segment, I'll keep the city, state, and postal code fields. Then delete everything else. Now, to create the build to table, I can just copy this script. and paste it then change the table name to build to then execute the query and just like that we've created two tables Finally, the EDI sample document option creates a sample EDI file. However, the data is meaningless, but the file structure is at least correct. It does not replace a sample EDI file that you should get from your trading partner, but will suffice until you get one. All you have to do is remove the header above the ISA segment of the EDI section. And then save it to a file. So let's open the save file with a text editor. And here's a simple EDI document. 